Okay, so I'm going to attempt to try and videotape for you guys putting on the uh, competition works for the Super Sport. I uh, looked online before I bought this and there's one video of a guy demonstrating what it sounds like but no videos of any installs. So I'm going to do my best to show you guys what that process looks like. So the first thing you need to do is take this little retaining clip that's right here. And you need to take that off and then slide that little cable out of there. And that disconnects from down here too. So I'll go ahead and do that. So that cable clip just pops off. And then that's the little retaining cable. You just slide it out of there. Step one. Next thing we're gonna do is on the same side, the other side of this bike, this same screw right here is right there. We're gonna go ahead and take those loose. So I'm gonna show you guys the takedown on this bike, but I'm not going to be showing you the way that the exhaust sounds before. Uh, there's hundreds of videos about the super sports and if you go online you can see what it sounds like before i will be showing you what it sounds like after but before that's up to you okay so to undo those bolts you're going to need a 3 16 um hex head bolt so that's what these are and these fit right there you're going to want to undo undo those okay so i'll go ahead and do that for you guys uh, but i'm going to need both hands Okay, so that's where the bolt came out of. That's what they look like. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, this is the other side of the bike. I just removed this bolt from that lower one there. So these will swing a little bit loose now. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is technically you gotta get this bolt right there off, but this heat shield gets in the way. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these two bolts here to get that heat shield out of the way. And also, uh, all these sizes between these bolts that were down here and this, uh, they're going to change. So I don't know what this is yet, but we'll find out once we get this shield off because I can't fit anything down in there. Okay, so what I did was I took those two bolts I showed you, uh, removed them. They look like that. And they've got little uh, backers on both sides of them, so they clamp down. But uh, I went ahead and removed it. You can't fully take it off if you can slide it out of the way. You know, just set it up there, and that'll give us access to this bolt in there. Okay, so I went ahead and moved that, uh, removed that bolt, and you can see the Loctite that fell down in there. Um, it's right there, and this is what the bolt looks like. So the Loctite's right there on the inside of that bolt. But uh, get a good pair of channel locks and grip it on there. You should, it's got these little tiny grooves on it. You should be able to grip it tight enough to break that Loctite and then find an Allen key that you can stick in there. Or uh, if you've got a socketed hex head, I would use one like this. You can probably get in there, but I didn't have the one that would fit this, unfortunately. So I had to use this little guy the whole time. But I'll go ahead and show you the next thing. Remove that bolt. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, removed this heat shield. I was kind of stupid. I suppose I could have wiggled it out of there the whole time, but it kind of fits in like an L and then slides back in. So like a puzzle piece, just pivot it and, and pop it out. The next thing you want to do is there's a little clamp right here. You're going to want to loosen this clamp. Okay, so I went ahead and loosened uh, this bolt back here, which is a, an exhaust clamp. And you got to loosen that one up. So once you get play in it, you know that it's uh, it's been loose. This one was kind of hard to get to at first because I think the person that tightened it up kept it real close to this. So if there's a way for you to, when you retighten it, make sure you keep yourself off it a little bit. So that way you can use a, a setup like this to be able to get to it. Um, I actually ended up having to use one of these. So, so far I'm doing everything the hard way. Next, uh, we're gonna come around to the other side of the bike. And 
There's some bolts here. We're gonna loosen up the oil reservoir a little bit here. Oh, sorry, there. And then uh, that way we can get to this bolt here on, on the heat shield. And then that bolt there so that we can take this off. Okay, so I went ahead and removed uh, th this little bolt right here, which as you can see, it actually has the uh, red permanent um, uh, Loctite on it. But uh, I was able to get it out of there without too much of a fuss, just with a regular Allen key. Uh, remove that, you get it out of the way, you can undo the bolts that are down there for the heat shield. Uh, sorry, down there, if I can get it to focus, there we go. And then uh, there's one up here too, but actually mine had been uh, removed. So all of these for the heat shield uh, on my bike were loose. So if you're just watching this video for fun uh, and you have one of these bikes, I would go and tighten those up because this was not in here when I went to remove it. Uh, they were all pretty loose. It could have just fell out on the road anywhere. Anyway, next thing you're gonna need to do is cut these little wire ties. So they're hard to see, but there's one there, one there, one here. There's a bunch of them uh, that just hold the O2 sensor wires. You're gonna have to cut those ties off so that we can get in there and remove this O2 sensor. So the best way to remove that sensor would be to use a tool like this. And if you don't have this tool, you're screwed. Now, just kidding. The uh, kit comes with it. They give you this. So that allows it to slip past the wire and then you'll be able to loosen it. That's the next thing to do. Okay, so I went ahead and cut each one of those uh, uh, little zip ties. So I just actually snipped the tops of them off. Uh, I used some of these right here. If you have some, those will probably work. Uh, snip it off right there, right there, and right there. So now this O2 wire is free. And then you can take that little tool which has the cutout in it, and you can slip that right over the top, like so. See? Boom. And then you can remove it, and obviously the wire will move a little bit, and then you'll have to take it off and replace it, but that's how you get the O2 sensor out. So now we'll remove that. Okay, went ahead and removed that O2 sensor. That's what that looks like right there. It, uh, it does get kind of tangled up while you're, you know, and twisted around while you're removing it, but you only have to go that many threads, so you can probably do it without damaging it. Uh, the next thing I did was I just slid that heat shield that was on there off. It's kind of like the other one where it's got that little L bracket, but uh, this little indentation here is for this uh, oil vent tube. So you can see it fits up behind that. So just squeeze that for towards you with your finger and it should slide right out. The next thing you gotta do is remove both of these bolts on uh, this side and on the other side, that one I pointed out earlier, which I thought was gonna be a problem. You can tell these are rusty. Uh, I really hope I can get these bolts out because that one on that side and uh, this one over here are definitely going to be problems. Uh, but we'll see if we can get them out. The other thing is up here, is the uh, little clamp that holds the two of them together. You can see it right there too, uh, up in here. But I already loosened that up, it's just a uh, Phillips head. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and try and take this off. Okay, so like I said, these bolts are pretty much impossible to get off of here. Um, they're pretty well rusted. Uh, you know, this is a newer bike, this is a 2017, and these bolts are still rusted, so it's probably just a bad material that they used for this screw here. But um, both sides are pretty difficult to get off. I almost stripped this. I just decided to stop, stop trying to hit it before I fully stripped it. But technically, all of this stuff has to come off of here, this heat shield, in order, the, the reason why they want you to take it off is to get to these head pipe bolts. So I think if I can get to this, obviously I can get to this one and this one, it just might take a while. I uh, obviously can't get a socket in there, but there's also head pipe bolts on the other side there. So those ones are harder to get to. So I also, I took the seat off just real quick. Obviously, uh, if you have one of these bikes, you just stick the key in down there, whole thing pops out. So I got some more light coming in. This is the uh, oil vent tube right here that I uh, pointed to you guys before uh, that you just had to move to the side. Well, you can take that off right here with this clamp I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove 
this clamp here and uh, attempt to pull this off to the side and then I can get to that head pipe bolt. If you can see it right there, there's one. Should be another one up there behind there. But uh, I don't know if I can get to it, uh, I will. And if I can't, then uh, we'll find something else. But that's what I'm gonna do now. I'll keep you guys updated. Okay, so I popped the little uh, oil vent tube off. It popped out uh, right there. Take that little clamp loose. And then I just shoved a, uh, a shop towel in there, a microfiber, so that it didn't drip. But uh, there, there wasn't much oil there anyway, just around the, the little uh, spot where it connects there. I, I wiped it off real quick. That should give me access to that bolt right there, you see. And I'll just use a, uh, a crescent and try and get that one free, the top one, which you can see right down in there, barely. Doesn't want to focus on it. There it is, that one. And then uh, also these ones on this side. I'll, I'll use crescent wrench and get them free, and then hopefully I can drop this whole, whole thing down through the hole there without worrying about uh, those bolts that I couldn't get undone. But uh, it's not easy. Hopefully this is uh, not gonna be too much of a problem. We'll see. Okay, so I went ahead and dropped the old exhaust. It pulls out from down there and from the very bottom of this pipe right there. If you can see that. What you basically have to do is you gotta take those three screws that I showed you, which by the way, I had to switch that one out um, to, uh, you know, they came copper. Uh, let's see. You just basically make them loose like this and like that. And then it'll allow you to, uh, you know, pivot it, move it the way it needs to be moved so that you can pull, you know, down and back at the same time in order to drop this exhaust all the way down. So if you're gonna drop this uh, this down, uh, it was pretty tough. I'll be 100% honest with you. Uh, this stuff is pretty old and it sticks there pretty well. That was a pain in the butt, but it's done. It's off the bike. And now we're going to take that down pipe piece from down here and plug the one that came from Competition Works into that one. So y'all are gonna have to bear with me because it's kind of hard to see, but what we did was got it connected down here at the bottom. This is the old pipe. Uh, I got this pulled in and then the spring attached, which uh, you know, you just reuse the regular spring. The competition works has that little hinge there for you. Uh, went ahead and put that down pipe in. This thing uh, swivels, but it should be pretty much in the downward position so that you can get it on that uh, uh, there's a screw back there, so you can see I'm going to have to just pound it up a little bit with a mallet until that settles uh, into its spot up there. already put the clamp back on, but it's not completely tightened. Uh, this guy went back on with the original screws uh, for the first two and then a replacement one back there for the others. But uh, it's still a little loose, so I still have a little bit of play with it. I should just be able to tap that up until that hole uh, lines up there. So next thing is we're going to install the uh, downpipe all the way back on. That'll connect to the other part right here that you saw on the other side. And then pretty much finish everything up once I put the O2 sensor back where it came from. And then uh, pretty much button everything up. There's also that servo that was connected right there is not going to be there anymore. So there's a little hack to uh, fix that issue. Okay, so this is now fully in right here. I have bolted this piece onto uh, the little, they give you a little spot that's welded. There's a little nut that's welded in there. You just have to line it up with that. Like I said, I pushed from the bottom and got that in there, no problem. Uh, I've tightened up this uh, clamp now. So this clamp is fully tightened. And then every single one of these uh, head bolts I've got nice and tight there. So there's not gonna be any leaks along that. And even that really hard to reach one way back there so next like I said is to put that can on uh, and then we'll start putting the sensors back together okay so before I put the final can on what I did was I reinstalled all of these heat shields uh, put the O2 sensor back in uh, and remember I was missing one so I actually used the prettier one that that's stock I put that one there 
and then uh, I used just a random bolt that I had that happened to fix it, uh, fit fine right there. Doesn't look, you know, the coolest, but honestly, you probably won't see it there because this thing will get attached and you, you won't really see it in the way. The cam should be like right about there. But uh, I'll do that next. I did do the heat shield on this side. Uh, reattached the drainage. Uh, that's the uh, vent, the oil vent right there. There's just a little hex head, a Phillips head, sorry. And same thing on this side. Put that heat shield back on there and there. So now we'll do the can. Okay, so on the old exhaust, uh, this is where it connected, right there. And that has a welded back on it. So that's how that one worked. Uh, it connected right up underneath here, same as on the other side, one of these little clamps. And they supply you with a little nut and washer to use the stock hardware, sorry, right here, which will go through there which connects up on this bad boy right there. So we'll go ahead and install that, put uh, put it on here and install that piece there and then we'll deal with the servo mount up underneath there. Okay, so I've installed the can. That's what it's gonna end up looking like right there. Just put that screw in with the six millimeter backer that they gave you. And then I position this clamp at the top I'm sure you can put it however you want, but I put mine up at the top. Uh, so it's pretty clean from the bottom. That's pretty much what we got right there. Nice and clean. Uh, the next thing we gotta do is they give you this little bracket right here and that will trick the servo valve right up in here where that cable used to go in. We're gonna remove this screw and put that little guy in there. I'll show you what that looks like. And that's the last thing. And then uh, should be ready to go. Looks pretty good. Okay. Here we go. 